Approximately 2.45 billion years ago, the Earth was a hostile world with limited oxygen in the atmosphere, and any dissolved oxygen in the oceans was restricted to limited shallow regions. This changed during the Great Oxidation Event, when cyanobacteria in the world's oceans began producing oxygen through photosynthesis. These cyanobacteria evolved over the next several million years to become the first red and brown algae about 1.2 billion years ago, and then green algae almost 750 million years ago. The levels of oxygen in the ocean and the atmosphere continue to rise. The oldest unequivocal fossil evidence showing the evolution of the first embryophyta or land plants is from the Ordovician period and is 470 million years old, but the actual colonisation may have begun tens of millions of years earlier. Bryophytes such as mosses and liverworts evolved from green algae that had washed onto freshwater and marine shores and were the first plants to inhabit the land. However, they lacked vascular structures such as stems and roots to pull water from the soil and they are unable to grow away from the ground so they are merely spread in surface area. The colonisation of land by bryophytes during the Ordovician was only possible due to the symbiotic relationship between bryophytes and rhizoids. Rhizoids acted as root hairs would in vascular plants, using capillary action to absorb water. As the biomass of terrestrial plants increased, they not only added oxygen to the atmosphere, but organic matter to the soils as they decayed. The leaching of soils, combined with the decaying of the first life, and the destructive nature of some acid-producing symbiotic lichens led to the development of soil. The first land plant macrofossils were from the group Cucosonia. They contained sporophytes, which were sophisticated water-conducting channels, which made them the first vascular plants. In the mid to late Silurian, a diversity in spores showed the diversification and evolution of land plants. Some of these plants used roots, which caused bioturbation of the soil, causing deeper penetration of water, oxygen and nutrients into the ground. Plants evolved onto land first, but their body plants stayed small for tens of million years. The rise of tracheophytes occurred when they began to deposit lignin into their cell walls. Lignin provided strength and support for long distance water transport, as well as a defensive barrier against pathogens and herbivores. This allowed land plants to truly flourish and dominate the terrestrial ecosystem. The early Devonian landscape is characterised by a strong radiation of plants growing larger. Archaeopteris was a tree-like plant with fern-like leaves and is considered one of the world's first trees. It contained complex xylem and phloem vessels which allowed the upward movement of water. This mechanism allowed it to grow 30 metres up and away from the land. As the size and number of plants grew, so did the O2 concentration in the atmosphere. It's one small step. Plants. One giant leap. Animals. The increase in oxygen in the atmosphere due to photosynthetic plants, along with the creation of soils, formed terrestrial habitats that could support animal life out of the oceans, rivers and lakes. Arthropods were the first animals to colonise the land, followed by tetrapods. Believed to be one of the first animals on land were orobatid mites, an extant group of chelicerates that are represented in the fossil record from the mid-Devonian, so maybe up to Silurian in age. Opportunistic predation and scavenging of the organic detritus were typical feeding modes for the mites, and the presence of plants provided a satisfactory habitat for these arthropods. Another common arthropod fossil from the Silurian is an extinct spider-like creature, Trigonotarbid. Trigonotarbid was similar to modern spiders in many ways, but lacked silk-producing appendages and poison ducts. This indicated they didn't spin webs or subdue their prey with venom. However, specialised fangs and jaws indicated they were not herbivores. Other arthropod species that resembled giant millipedes also existed. Artiplora were detritus feeders that flourished through the Carboniferous. They were characterised by their large size, extremely tough exoskeletons and up to 30 pairs of segmented legs. 397 million years ago, during the Lower Devonian, tetrapods became the first vertebrates to set foot on land. A combination of evolutionary pushes and pulls drove them from the ocean and onto the land. The ocean was a source of predation and competition, and the Lower Devonian experienced severe droughts, which caused smaller bodies of water to disappear and forced the evolution of these animals. They moved to the land where the niches and habitats that plants had created were available to exploit. Higher atmospheric oxygen levels due to the plants meant the terrestrial world was more favourable than previously.
Tetrapods were able to inhabit the land due to the ecosystems created by plants and populated by arthropods. However, they had evolved from fish, which lacked the correct jaw structure and digestive enzymes to survive on the plant cover. They remained carnivorous during the Devonian and Carboniferous, surviving on arthropods or returning to the water to feed. In the late Carboniferous, their jaws had adapted to the new plant-based lifestyle, and they had developed complex digestive enzymes to break down the cellulose of plant cell walls. This allowed tetrapods to evolve to survive on the now abundant plant cover. The quest of land by individuals that evolved from aquatic ancestors represents a fascinating drama in Earth's history of life. The gradual transition during the last few hundreds of millions of years was initiated by simple photosynthetic forms to be later followed by more complex plants and trees. Without the colonisation of land by plants, the terrestrial phylogenetic tree could only just be the beginning. Thank you.